Welcome to Lessons from Leaders. When we talk about great leadership, it is exemplified in a number of qualities. And today, we will be taking a look at certain leaders that have demonstrated great leadership in the middle of crisis. That's right, in the middle of this pandemic. What do leaders have in common from countries with the best coronavirus response. What do these leaders have in common? It may surprise you, but what they have in common is they are women leaders. I'm talking about the awesome women leaders on the screen right now. We're gonna examine what makes them great leaders. Now, to underscore the importance of their leadership and what they have done for their countries, let's examine countries most affected by coronavirus. And you can see those on the screen right now. The countries most affected by the coronavirus are the USA, Brazil, Russia, Spain, the United Kingdom, Italy, and France. Countries that are recognized as having managed the best crisis are Germany, Taiwan, New Zealand, Iceland, Finland, Norway, and Denmark. A picture is worth a thousand words, as they say. And you can see that those leaders from countries with the best responses are indeed women. And when one of my students posted this on her social media page, I began to explore within me why that happened. And I came up with an idea and a response that I sent to her, and I thought I should probably share this with you as well. Let's examine the numbers a little bit closer. Here are the numbers on the screen. Denmark, Meta Fredriksen, her country, 260 deaths. Iceland, under the leadership of Katrin, Jacobs dot here, eight deaths at the time this was put together. This is from Forbes magazine. Finland, 49 deaths. Germany, 2,673, rather large, but don't forget that's a massive country as well. New Zealand, four deaths. Norway, 98, and Taiwan, six. Now, when you take a look at these numbers, you wonder what exactly did these leaders do? These leaders exemplified a number of leadership qualities that I want us to examine right now. Let's start off with Germany. Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, stood up early and calmly told her countrymen that this was a serious bug that would infect up to 70% of the population. It's serious, she said. Take it seriously. Now let's examine the coronavirus curve numbers over the past number of days. You can see how that curve has steadily declined. So as she said this to her people, they jumped right on it. Testing started right from the get-go. Germany jumped right over the phases of denial, anger, been disingenuous and their numbers are far below their neighbors in Europe. This is not by accident. It's as a result of her telling the truth. Truth is one of the hallmarks of great leadership. Look the truth in the eye and tell it. And that's exactly what she did. This was not by accident. Let's take a look at our next leader here, Tsai Ing-wen. She was among the first and the fastest responses in this coronavirus. Of a new illness, she introduced 124 measures to block the spread without elsewhere. In fact, right now she's sending 10 million masks to other countries 
These things do not happen by accident. They happen by great leadership. Let's take a look at the curve here for the coronavirus numbers in Taiwan. And we see it got really crazy around March. Had a big spike somewhere in April, but the numbers have reduced to a blip on the screen. Again, a truly remarkable response. So imagine that. I know there's a lot to be said, and a lot has been said about China and their response in this whole pandemic. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is how it is being handled. And when we talk about decisiveness, this is a good example. Let's go to our next woman leader here, Jacinda Ardern. In New Zealand, she was very early to lock down and crystal clear on the maximum level of alert she was put in the country under and why. One of the youngest leaders in the world today, she did not waste time in taking action against the coronavirus. Now, when you take a look at the curve again, you see a tremendous decline in the numbers. Now, take a look at the decline in the numbers in New Zealand. And now, take a look at the numbers in the United States of America. You can see the curve, rather than diminish, is actually picking up rapidly. What does that tell you? A number of things. I believe you'll be able to make your own decisions and conclusions from these numbers. But from the last numbers poll just yesterday, you can see 61,834 in a day affected with it. Those numbers are not illustrative of great leadership, are they? I'll leave you to make up your mind regarding that. Let's move on to our final leader for today because I am going to be covering these leaders, as I said, over a time period of a week or two. But for today, we have one more. Let's go to our final leader. The final leader we want to take a look at is Katrin Jakobsdottir from Iceland. And I label this as protectivity, a play on words about how technically focused she was to get out testing as soon as possible to her people. And right now, they've got a fantastic tracking mechanism in place to keep track of those with the virus. It is truly remarkable. Right now, as you can see, again, it is pretty much but a blip on their radar. These numbers speak volumes. As it's often said, the numbers do not lie. So what did I make of all of this as I read through? There are a number of qualities of great leaders who are women, but I decided to take five qualities of these great women leaders that I saw immediately and I was able to recognize. First of all, from experience, I have found that women leaders, project managers, those who are really great leaders, they pay attention to detail. Secondly, there is low or no ego. No one is trying to front or puff themselves up. They're there for the job, right? They actively listen. And one of the things I noticed just watching the interviews of these great leaders is they were not presumptuous they all identified that there could be a second wave, a second spike. So they're not taking it for granted. They're on their toes. They actively listen. They're humble. They're not know-it-alls. They don't feel like they know everything. In the interviews that I watched, 
at least two of these leaders said, cannot give you a response about this because we do not know what's going to happen. A lot of things are known. Rather than label something as falsities, they've recognized that this thing is real and it could return in a way that no one could even imagine. They put lives before livelihood. In a lot of other countries, you see livelihood and the economy before lives. That's not right. Now, truly remarkable is the response that some of these leaders had to this virus. One of the leaders decided to actually hold a conference with children, a press conference with kids. How remarkable is that? Another one decided to leverage social media to use influencers. That shows an understanding of what leadership is. The true measure of leadership is influence. So in order to lead, it would make sense to leverage the influence of influencers. Great leaders know it's not all about them. They leverage what they need to get results. So taking a look at these awesome women leaders, there is a lot to be learned. There is a lot to conclude. The true measure of leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. Thank you very much for joining me today. We've come to the end of our episode of Great Leadership, looking through the lens of the coronavirus. Next episode, we'll take a look at the other leaders that are left on this roster. Just put a comment below and let us know. Thank you very much and bye for now.